never came in to check on her to see if she was okay. A local Ford Defenders exclusive, a jail sentence becomes a death sentence when a young mother dies behind bars. Good to have you with us tonight at 11. That mother was sent to jail for falling behind on child support. 37 year old Jennifer Myers died inside the Macomb County Jail 12 days into her 30 day sentence. Tonight, Defender Kevin Dietz joins us live with the exclusive videos of the jailhouse interviews with inmates who were with Myers in her final days. Kevin. That's right, and here's the video right here. It is from inside the jail, and it has key interviews with witnesses who say they saw Jennifer Myers suffering for several days and was never taken to the hospital. Jenny Myers gets out of a police car in handcuffs and is escorted into the Macomb County Jail. The 37-year-old mother is patted down and ordered to put on a beige inmate outfit. She is not here for murder or assault, not even robbery. She's here for non-payment of child support, a judge saying pay $500 or spend 30 days in jail. This was the scene 12 days later, just after cellmates found the young mother dead in her cell. We got her checker pulse, she went like this, she's like, she's ice cold. And we knew right then, you know, she was, she was gone. The exclusive jail video obtained by the defender shows reaction from inmates immediately following the discovery. And it shows her body being brought out on a stretcher in a body bag. Jennifer Myers wasn't murdered. She didn't commit suicide or overdose. She died from a virus slowly moving through her body. Neither the sheriff's department guards nor the privately contracted medical staff took her to a hospital. The minute I touched her, she felt like she was in a meat freezer. These two women were in the Macomb County Jail at the same time. We're not showing their faces or using their names. Danny Meyer's death occurred July 7, 2013. These video statements were just released as part of a civil lawsuit filed by attorney Robert Ayeri. And obviously when somebody comes into the jail, uh, the punishment is being there. The punishment isn't uh, to die. He claims in a federal lawsuit that jail guards and medical staff at the Macomb County Jail failed to see what was obvious to other inmates. And it looked like she had just got out of the shower. She was sweating so bad. The inmates say they put wet towels on Meyer's body, trying to cool her down. They say the illness was not sudden. She was becoming increasingly ill each day of her incarceration. Nobody ever came in to check on her to see if she was okay. She wasn't eating, she wasn't drinking. In her final three days of life, Jenny was too sick to get off her cot at mealtime. She was literally laying in bed, cuddled up like this, you know, like not even able to move, so. How many hours a day would she be like that? All day. In jail, requests for medical attention are called kites. Inmates say they were ignored. She was kiting all the time, and the nurses would not do nothing about it. She says, you're going to like, give it to midnight staff and morning staff. I can't do nothing about it. If Myers was evaluated, she was not determined sick enough to go to the hospital. The nurses aren't doing crap about it. The officers, you know, don't give her time of day. Local 4 medical expert Dr. Frank McGeorge is an expert in in-depth custody cases. He studied the death certificate and autopsy report. Her official cause of death, acute sepsis. McGeorge says the signs of illness and foul smell should have warranted an in-depth exam by jail medical staff and a trip to the hospital. To leave them in jail with an infection that ultimately leads to their death is just about the same as putting them to death. Witnesses say in addition to sweating profusely and not being able to get out of bed, Jenny Myers had a horrible smell. People were like, you got a shower, you stink, like we can't take it no more. If she were anywhere in the normal world outside of jail, she would have taken herself to the hospital or to an emergency room. They either did not notice or did not realize how sick she was. In Myers' final hours, she was alone in her cell, too sick to go to mealtime. When her cellmates returned, they found her dead. I was like, we got to check her pulse, went up, and she was, she was cold. She'd been begging for help. Uh, they didn't do shit about it. Jenny Myers went to jail because she was behind on her child support payments and could not come up with $500 cash. It turned out to be a death sentence. 
And tonight, the Macomb County Sheriff says he cannot comment on Jennifer Meyer's death because it is an open and active litigation. This is the same jail where David Stojewski died in 2014. In that case, a video showed Stojewski suffering terribly before dying on the floor from prescription medication withdrawal. The feds conducted a lengthy investigation and found no criminal wrongdoing by jail or medical staff in that case. Civil lawsuits are underway in both deaths, and we will continue to follow those and bring you the latest on them. Kevin Dietz, Defenders. And Kevin, I understand the parents of these two families have become somewhat friends and they're working to bring awareness to the concerns in these mm -hmm. county jails. Yes, they actually have become friends and they routinely on Saturdays get together for informational pickets out at the jail. Uh, Jennifer Meyer's parents said they were watching David Stojewski's case unfold on Local 4 and that's what actually gave them the courage to come forward in this case. Take a listen. You know, when that videotape came out on the news, I mean, you just cry yourself to sleep because you know that is very similar it's very similar to what happened to Jennifer. She didn't, she didn't want drugs to kill her. She didn't want to die. That choice was taken away from her to live. Jennifer Meyer's parents say that uh, they were told initially that Jennifer died suddenly. And now after hearing the witnesses on this videotape we just showed you, they realized that she died slowly over several days and they want answers, especially why wasn't she taken to the hospital? You're going to hear their entire story tomorrow at 5 p.m. on Local 4. Okay, Kevin, we'll look forward to your report then. We appreciate it.